Just a colour check. Uh, Kappa Blur now in a white cap. Same colours as State of Play, same ownership. White cap, Kappa Blur, blue cap, State of Play. If you're looking for either of those two, Evan Williams trained runners as they come out now and make a line. Coming in, Demons right at the back of them as they come forward and they're away. Racing for the Hennessy. Denman rushed forward now on the outside by Ruby Walsh. Don't think he really wanted to be right at the back as they lined up, but he's got very handy as they jump the first fence. War of Attrition, one of the leaders, a mistake at the first by Chelsea Harbour, and one has gone at the first offshore accountant. Davy Casey are out of the race, unseats at the first fence. On to the second. War of Attrition, Joe Lively, Denman on the outside. The Orange colours of Niche Market, gone to lunch, Barber's Shop is handy in the royal jacket, then Bally fits the inside, followed by Kappa Blur in that white cap, and Accordion and Mom Moan towards the outside, Snowy Morning, then Killy Glen as they cleared the third, What a Friend is held up towards the rear of the field with Nenefar, Collange, Cornati, Kid, and then My Will and Chelsea Harbour who made that blunder at the first fence as they jump the next, and Joe Lively and young Giles Hawkins now makes the running in the Hennessy from Niche Market. Denman in the light green sleeves is third. On the outside, the far side, the Grand National winner, Mon Mom in a green jacket. On the near side, gone to lunch from Barber's Shop. Close up is Killy Glen in the orange sleeves. On the right, Kappa Blur, state of play, tracking the leaders with What a Friend, just behind War of Attrition in a maroon and white jacket. Cornati Kit to the outside of Nenefar Collange, and they're followed by Snowy Morning, Chelsea Harbour. They're very well grouped indeed as they race now left-handed towards the cross fence for the first time. Ruby Walsh sitting in about third place on the top weight and favourite Denman as they race downhill towards the next. 21 fences in all to be crossed. This is fence number six. Niche Market and Joe Lively are going to dispute it here. From Denman over in third, gone to lunch, was fourth. Towards the back in the red sleeve jacket, My Will is one of the last at the moment as they race towards this left-hand turn. The riderless offshore account is after them and David Casey appears to be all right after his fall at the first. Swinging left-handed with the home straight ahead of them and another circuit after that. Joe Lively on the outside of Niche Market. The 11 to 4 favourite Denman disputing third towards the far side with Gone to Lunch. They're tracked by Kappa Blur. Then Killy Glen and Mom Mom on the near side. Barber Shop lies about eighth in the hands of Barry Geraghty, followed by War of Attrition as now they race towards the eighth and it's an open ditch. Niche Market from Denman, who put in a short stride. Joe Lively jumped it rather better. Slow there was Bally Fitz, who now drops to the tail of the field. And Accordion's out the back. Nenefar Collange got a reminder. My Will on the extreme left still right out the back as they clear the next plane fence and motor on towards fence number 10, which will be the last next time round. Niche Market from Denman. Joe Lively on the near side. Gone to lunch. Killy Glen just coasting in behind them. Followed by Barber's Shop. Then Mom Moan the outside. Kappa Blur right up the inner. What a friend was next from State of Play and then Snowy Morning and War of Attrition and Cornati Kid and Accordion, Nenefar Cologne, Chelsea Harbour, My Will and Bally Fitz his last as they head to the water and Denman is going to lead here right in front of the stands, a crowd pleaser. Denman leads the way from Niche Market in second, Joe Lively in third, then Killy Glen, Barber's Shop, Mon Moan, War of Attrition gone to lunch, then State of Play, What a Friend, Cornati Kid, Nenefar Cologne, Kappa Blur, next is Snowy Morning, followed by Anna Cordian, My Will, Chelsea Harbour, Bally Fitz tailing off. John Frankham, how's the favourite going? Would you like to be on him? Yeah, he certainly would. I mean, it's interesting that two horses that start, started off giving them a lead, they just dropped back slightly. Ruby felt that his cruising speed was um, just a little bit too good for them. Got him up, he's been jumping fluently, travelling well, but there's three or four there. There's niche markets going well, so's what a friend when you're looking behind. And Kelly Glenn also right there in fourth place has uh, gone pretty well all the way as they jump another open ditch. Niche market from Denman there, from uh, Killy Glenn on the inside, Joe Lively, Barber's Shop. My Will is moving ground. Bally Fitz is pulling up, has run no sort of race at all as they jump the next plane one. Niche Market from Denman. Killy Glen third, then Barber's Shop in fourth, breathing down their necks. Gone to lunch, trying to hang on in there. Joe Lively coming under a bit of pressure. 
as they race towards the next. War of Attrition is out wide of Cornati Kid. Very wide is My Will clearing that one. And an accordion, Nenefar Kalodge is flat to the boards. Denman on the left, just in behind Barber's shot, stalking him as they run towards the next plane fence. Niche Market alongside Denman there. Killy Glenn climbed that slightly. Barber's shot travels well still from Joe Lively, the yellow jacket, then Cornati Kid as they now race towards the exit of the back straight. About three quarters of a mile left to cover from here, and Denman takes it up from Niche Market. Barber's shop is third. What a friend now goes well. Look at that, the white jacket, Sam Thomas, the stable companion of the leader. In the sheepskin noseband, what a friend just hunting up the leaders as they swing left-handed towards the cross fence. Denman, Barber's shop, Niche Market, then Joe Lively. What a friend looking dangerous. Gone to lunch is a bit off his great jump from Denman at the cross fence. Joe Lively met it wrong. That was a superb jump from Denman. Took another length out of them. Barber's shop in second. Niche Market is third. The crowd are beginning to roar him on as they run left-handed and enter the home straight. It's the top weight Denman that leads from Barber's shop. Niche Market, but in behind. What a friend has travelled well all the way and looks sure to play a part. They race down towards the fourth blast. Denman is challenged by Barber's shop on the far side, but another great jump from the leader. He's gone three lengths clear and so Suddenly they're at it in behind. He's racing now towards the final open ditch. Denman by three lengths. His stable companion now in hot pursuit. What a friend. Barber shop in third. Niche market in fourth. Then gone to lunch and snowy morning. Two fences to jump. Denman is taken on by what a friend. There's a huge weight difference. Denman by about a length. What a friend challenging in second place. Ruby Walsh and Sam Thomas. A score to be settled. Then Barber shop and niche market racing towards the final fence. What a friend is hanging. He looks awkward. Denman still fighting over the last good jump again from Denman. And he lands in front on the run for home. Denman pulling out more from what a friend. He's under 11 stone 12. One of the great performances in jump race history. Denman by three legs to what a friend. Denman is keeping on. Another demolition job from Denman. And he wins his second Hennessy. A heroic victory from what a friend in second. Tight third niche market and Barber's shop, then gone to lunch in fifth. Cornati Kid sixth, followed home by My Will. Drips and drabs, snowy morning, Nenefar Colange, Joe Lively, War of Attrition, and Chelsea Harbour. Oh, you won't see scenes like this at Newbury for many a year. Denman defies 11 stone, 12 top weight, and a rating of 174 to win his second Hennessy Gold Cup. Also a Gold Cup winner, of course, at Cheltenham. He's one of the greats now. And what an era of jumping with his stablemate Corto Star back home in Ditcheat. And surely this sets up a fantastic prospect in the Cheltenham Gold Cup next March. At the present time, it's 1-1. Corto Star, Denman, the decider is on for March. Five runs here, five wins. What a fantastic horse is, and he's been given a tremendous ride. Never missed a beat all the way around. Got a tremendous jump out of him on the cross fence. Got in a little bit close to the second last, and I think that's helped him just to get some uh, air into his lungs. But they were queuing up to take him on. Really good horses, well-regarded horses. You got an out-and-out -out stayer in Niche Market. You got a class horse there in Barber's shop. What a friend coming through and he still put them all to the sword. It was amazing because yeah, when you look at the start of the race, you see where Ruby Walsh started off. He started off right on the outside, in behind, having to shunt him along to get him going. He ends up right on the inside down the back straight. And, you know, you can't underestimate what a jockey does all the way around. And Ruby, down to the last, you could see him. He's almost bullied what a friend out of it. He's not left an awful lot of room for the horse on his outside. But this was a great performance by a horse. You know, you, 11 stone 12, he's 15 pounds higher rating than he was when he won the race a couple of years ago. There's no, this is a Gold Cup winning performance and he's a real force to be reckoned with again now and I think Paul Nichols done a great job. Well, I want to hear what Ruby Walsh has to say when he comes in between him and Corto Star. I've always been a Corto Star fan, but you can't not have been taken by this. This horse really used himself. Look at that, 11 stone 12, as testing conditions as that, and he still made a huge effort over the last, never put a foot wrong. His jumping and courage have won it, but just got so much class to go with it as well. What a day, Ruby Walsh. This horse is something else. He's a wonderful horse, wonderful horse. Um, 
got a bit of a soft lead. We weren't going that quick for Hennessy and got to dictate it. When both times he swung for home, he was taking me. So I got into the straight in front. I was thinking he'd get to the line now if I can keep him going. And I was watching you at the start and you were rasting him and trying to chivy him along, but he picked up the bit all right through the race, didn't he? He did, no. He got him wet on the outside. And as I said, they didn't go mad, so it gave me a chance to get him going. But I suppose it's a terrible thing to say about ours just one Hennessy, but I'd love to put a pair of blinkers on him. <laughs> He'd be some horse then, but he's done so much today, and round three's on for Cheltenham in March. Oh, definitely. I mean, they're great horses, and I mean, everybody did treat all the girls and Paul and Clifford and everyone to do a wonderful job with them, and I guess they're doing, a, they're doing a great job for racing, keeping these two horses on the road. This horse is doing a fantastic job for racing, as are you? Well done, Ruby. Thank you. Cheers. Even last year when he finished second in the world. And you think that four we had at entry as well? It's just a, an amazing performance, and the horse deserves an awful lot of credit, but... You know, Paul Nichols, the man in charge. What a great job he's done. Oh, unbelievable. You can, it's and Harry Finley won't sleep for a month. Uh, for counting his money. Well, I think just for talking, I think. Unless he talks in his sleep, but it's just an incredible performance. Well, the debrief from Demon, ex ecstasy rarely, and people with a lifetime in jumping never see anything like it. Harry Finley and Ruby Walsh and Paul Barber, of course. I mean, it has been a fabulous story, this horse, from the early days of massive promise and, of course, to have won a Gold Cup, to have been dethroned, but to have won two Hennessys off top weight, the likes of which we have never seen this before. He really is quite exceptional. I'm going to try and grab Paul Barber, if I may. He's very much a linchpin. Paul, you've been a lifetime in this game. What a fabulous result. I've never seen anything quite like that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we now have the Channel 4 cameras with us so we can proceed with the formalities of the presentation of the Hennessy Gold Cup. And joining us on the presentation podium, we have Maurice Hennessy, accompanied by model Jasmine Guinness. And they will now make the formal presentations, receiving as Harry Findlay, Paul Barber, Paul's wife, and Kay Duggan. Ladies and gentlemen, the winning owners. <laughs> Well, Denman, a fantastic leap path across fence. He's written the textbook round here for the staying chase, his second Hennessy victory. But the emotion attached to this one, so much the greater, because effectively he sealed the most fantastic comeback in the hands of this man, Paul Nichols, unable to speak. Unable to speak because he knows the mountain his horse has climbed. Uh, trophy presentation continues. And Paul Barber, Ruby Walsh, everyone just grins from ear to ear, grins wider than the Seven Bridge. A fabulous afternoon for jump racing, a fabulous afternoon for the superstar that is Denman and for the Walsh Nichols axis.